Okay, y'all uh, apparently get a truncated version of the intro. Uh, <laughs> hey, oh my god, Peter, what's up, my dude? Glad to have you here on the stream. Long time no chat, friend. Um, hey, it is April the 26th, 2021, and it has been a while since we have streamed. Uh, also, uh, I should make sure my power doesn't run out. Like we have done before in the middle of a stream. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> that would be super fun. Apparently, I am real uh, out of touch here with streaming because uh, nothing has gone right so far. But <laughs> we're back. Lady Merwin, thanks for the sub. How's everyone going? Uh, I am Slacker Kite. Welcome to the stream. Uh, of course, this is Mr. Video Games, brought to you by Dead Sun Entertainment. Uh, we have a lot to talk to you about uh, this week, and we're very glad to be back. Of course, I've got uh, the co-host back with us, as always. Um, one of the greatest journalists of our time coming to us live. It is uh, the boy that we all love, a wonder boy. A.K.A. Brian. How's it going, everyone? God, you, you church me up with compliments <laughs> like that. I swear. I'm doing well. The It's been, you know what? The, like, I'm like, I like doing the show a lot. And I'm, I was kind of bummed that we were going to take the break personally, just because like, I like doing the show so much. But I totally understand why we took that break. And it was a nice little refresher, you know, this kind of like, kind of chill especially for timing wise for me because you know i i started another gig um oh because, wow hala the gig the gig economy um so yeah so i've i started um uh writing for one of the more um well-known and prestigious uh lgbtq um blogs online uh mm -hmm. toll road oh. um so i've been I've been working there for about a week or so now, and uh, it's been pretty good. So I'm writing a little bit about game stuff over there, a lot about politics, huzzah, um, and you know, just general like new stuff and that's all that good things. But it was good because like had not having to do to do the show the past three weeks mm -hmm. has helped me in having time to <laughs> get used to doing that sort of pace again, which is nice. So in that way, it was a perfectly timed uh, thing for me. Um, on the other hand, though, um, it also gave me way too much time to play Apex Legends. And I played a lot of Apex Legends. <laughs> we'll definitely talk about it in a minute. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I was actually glad for the break because I got to step away from discourse for three weeks. And that's that's an amazing feeling, not caring about, you know which companies are being shitty to their employees this week and just going, oh, I yeah. bet it is amazing. It I bet is it real is cool. I bet. I bet. It, I don't, I don't know that pleasure. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's literally your job. So. Yep. It is. <laughs> Gosh. And it's not like the last five years have given me any time to step away from discourse. So it's a nice break to have like once in your life. <laughs> Don't know why that would keep going. But also, of course, the queen of the phone. One of the nicest people you will ever meet until she's not nice and then she's mean. Um, there, There's things going on in there where mean and nice uh, play together and make an average thing. But regardless, she is here. The best person to ever get... If your phone is broke for whatever reason, it's Lady Marilyn. <laughs> oh, I've missed you guys so much. I really have. It has been way too freaking long, but I do at the same time hereby put forth a vote that we have an annual vacation. Because mm -hmm. I, I think the little recharge reset might be good for all of us. I'm not really uh, that much against the idea of, like, you know, one month off per year just to uh, refresh and get back to why we enjoy doing the show beyond. We just love talking to each other, right? 
as someone who does this sort of thing on a daily basis, I totally get it. <laughs> I mean, at least here, I get to be me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be like queen of Zen and patience. If I get a rage ball moment, I can have my rage ball moment. <laughs> And if I need to face palm, I can also do so without getting yelled at. Um, that being said, how have you guys been? Like, it's been three weeks. Um, Brian, congrats on the new gig. Like, I, I was thrilled to see you put that out on Twitter. Thank you. I, like, full-on happy danced, and my squeeze of joy could not adequately come through in text. <laughs> uh, it was very much appreciated. <laughs> I'm you... terrible at taking compliments, so thank you. <laughs> we all are here. Uh, like, if people give me compliments, I instantly turn off and become a robot. Uh, I, oh, yes, uh, anyway, news. <laughs> so I'm glad to be good to you on the other hand of that. Um, uh, I spent the last few weeks shipping uh, my boy, uh, who was going to be married soon, a prasmatic uh, out of the house, and you would think getting rid of a roommate would be, like, an easier feat. No. Uh, no. Especially when half of their furniture is the furniture that you use to, like, do things with. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I had to... That's not good. I had to both get him out and then clean up after him and uh, then also build new furniture to replace the furniture what is now gone. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, it's been a little busy with all that, but, like, I love building furniture for some stupid-ass reason, so it's been nice for me. Yo, like, those kind of... Excuse me real quick. No worries. Ooh, little frog in the throat there. No, like, those kind of tasks can be very, very centering. Like, very Zen-esque yeah. sort of thing to not, like, you know, other any culture or anything like that. Like, is it... I don't, for me, like... That like those sort of like just manual tasks can be real nice to kind of just like pull yourself out of your surroundings and just like have a singular focus. That's how I am whenever I do the dishes. Mm -hmm. Like I look forward to doing the dishes because it means that I can just kind of like a bit and be in my own head space <laughs> for a while. So Brian, can I hire you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll email you my rate. Oh dear God! <laughs> Plus, you also have to pay for him to fly across country and then wait for that the borders true. to reopen. Well, that's just it. He can he can fly into Canada. Oh, you yeah. just can't drive into Canada. Just when you arrive, you have to do like a two week isolation quarantine BS thing. Ah, uh, oh, that reminds me. I got my first shot. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats! Yeah. I finally became eligible and got an appointment out here because Oregon has been terrible about getting appointments. I know that's a that 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 is not even necessarily to talk to how things have been in Canada right now, mm -hmm. but uh, you know I'm just I, I'm glad that, that I got that first jab. So I was going to say for reference, my 64 year old mother just got her first one today. Yeah, yeah. I do not qualify till July or August. <laughs> Um, wait, you can use the walk across border with, like, zero consequences? What? <sighs> yeah, yeah, that too. Um, the only places that we're really banning absolute travel from right now are Pakistan and India. Oh. Oof. And that's because those countries have both imploded. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Peter, if uh, you can tell me a way to uh, sneak my uh, happy ass into Canada, I will absolutely drive you wherever the hell you want to go. Dude, we have literally the world's longest unprotected border in the world. Nice. There are so many places where you can just, like, scooch across in the woods. <laughs> Hard to do that in a car, though, like the scooch and cross. Um, yeah. But I did, yeah. too, get uh, my shot. Uh, my therapist, while I was talking to him, was like, hey, you know, since you're in the state of New York and you're technically working with a licensed therapist through New York, you're, you know, technically disabled in New York, so we can push you through. 
I'm like fucking rad. Thank you. <laughs> what a great therapist. That's an amazing therapist. Yeah, not only uh, helps you out with your brain, but also like, hey, I'll uh, help you get that fucking shot everyone uh, and their sister wants, because uh, a lot of the shots are going to New York City and New York, which completely understandable. It is a big place where people are connect. Uh, very easy to catch it, but um, I I've got a wedding to go to in July, so please put it in my arm so I can go do that. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm with Foswald. i mean COVID ends trav can visit again yeah. i miss my trav cuddles yeah also gotta find out how peter co cuddles work so we'll do that um anyway cuddles are great can attest <laughs> should we start talking about video games uh yeah yeah sure. i mean that 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 is a thing that we do on the show right Sorry, yeah. guys. Like, we've been having our reunion. It's been a <laughs> long three weeks. So here's I miss my work. people. Do we want to talk about video games, or do we want to talk about the only video game that matters right now, Mortal Kombat? Oh, I didn't get a place to talk about the movie. Also, uh, don't mind it's me. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the, the web browser I have open to work properly, because <laughs> apparently you don't want to. It would take three weeks off, and all of our tools go to shit yeah i haven't I'm... turned on my pc in like two weeks which is why it took me a while to get her up and running again she's like seriously i thought you let me retire <laughs> oh you uh lost the weight that uh Lindsay lost or you gained the weight that Lindsay lost okay yeah i i've done the opposite of the covid 15 i've dropped the covid christ what is it now? 60? Wow. So. Nice. Congrats. I, I've gone from my 220-ish down to about 175. E. I don't know. I can't math. <laughs> so. Um, I put on a whole bunch of weight during COVID, which I didn't really have room to already being in that, you know morbidly obese category so uh <laughs> starting to get back into walking more but hey video games um so i haven't spent a whole lot of time during my break actually playing video games uh i have played a little bit and watched or at least listened to an awful fucking lot of northern lion who we have here playing the binding of isaac um and holy shit repentance is way better than uh i thought it could possibly be uh it is the best thing they've done since rebirth and that is saying a lot um there is so much new content here it literally breaks my brain not only are there two fully new characters in uh bethany and uh, uh jacob and Isel, but there's a tainted version of every single character that has their own, like, it's not just, hey, this one has more health and strength, or this one uh, has, uh, you know, well, a special item it starts with. No, the game literally <laughs> gives you a whole character that completely changes the way that you play the game. Um, like, um, one character... Um, after like a certain number of heart containers, uh, everything you drop eventually goes away, but every enemy you kill drops a heart container, uh, stuff along those lines. It gets way more complicated than that, but I don't really want to go into the really cool ones because I feel like it's almost kind of a spoiler for some of the really great shit. Um, it did fully bring in um, the uh, mod, uh, the... Uh, anti-birth mod and not only that it brought in all the enemies and bosses from that but also it added to the special route which you can see if you have like a key here you can unlock the special route um it allows you to find particular things you need for uh the one of the two new endings but also uh it's way harder with new different enemies and 
Um, yeah, uh, there are item rooms that not only contain an item, but if you don't want that item, you can get a question mark item that could be anything. It could even be that item. <laughs> uh, I can't gush enough about this. It is crazy to me. Like, the last two patches, the uh, Afterbirth and the Afterbirth Plus patches, really didn't make me think to have my expectations very high, because both of those patches were worth the money, but, like, not really transformative or anything. This change is huge and finally gives a real true ending to the Binding of Isaac. There is a legitimate ending to the game now. Huh. Like, I got introduced to the original way back in the day when I had a roommate who was into all things spoopy and odd. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it then and went, the fuck are you playing? <laughs> and even now, looking at it, this is a game I could watch somebody play all freaking day. It is not one that I could actually play myself. If uh, you really want to break your brain, uh, one of the... Um, there, there are, there's always been little special challenges you can do, and one of them literally takes every item and fucks around with the items, so... It's not that you don't have an idea of what item you're getting, but every item is a mishmash of other items boiled into one. So it completely makes your brain break because there is no way to know what you're even doing. There's even special shit that is only in that mode. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, I will never get all of the shit that you can allot from this. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. It is very much possible. Um, if uh, you really want to sit down and do it, you could unlock basically everything in the Binding of Isaac in about 60 hours. It is totally doable, but um, you have to have the will and perseverance to do all that. Um, my recommendation is at least if you are somewhat interested in Isaac, uh, watch somebody go down the uh, the actual path that uh, the the true ending path, because it's just real fucking neat. Everything about it does crazy shit that the game's never done, and actually given plot resolution to everything that's happening. It's cool. I love it. <laughs> Okay, I have uh, gushed enough about uh, Isaac. Uh, Brian, do you want to go into uh, the uh, new stuff and changes with Apex Legends you've been messing around with? Yeah, so um, basically, uh, like I said before, I took most of my time during the break with games uh, to get back properly into Apex Legends again. Um, you know, one of the main reasons why being that the game released on Switch and that finally gave uh, my partner and I the opportunity to play together um, because we both play this game. So there have been many a nights where we just sit down for like two hours, like them on their on the Switch and me on the PS4 and just going to town on this game. Um, it's in the middle of a War Games event right now, which has been pretty fun. But it is also in the waning days of Season 8, and they, uh, Respawn, announced the late, some details about what's coming in Season 9, which is set to launch, I believe, on May 4th. Ooh. And so far, they've released uh, a, new, a new legend uh, named Valkyrie, which delivers on some of those promises about tying back into the Titanfall 2 um, universe. Uh, Valkyrie apparently is the the child of a Titan pilot, and Titan and was a Titan pilot herself. So there there are tying things back into the Titanfall two universe a bit there. Um, also, there are new modes that are coming to the game that I'm very curious to try out. Basically, they built their own kind of like hybrid between Apex Legends and Valorant in their arenas mode that's coming. So it's basically, it's a three-on-three -three sort of tactical shooter approach to Apex Legends, where you team up uh, in an arena, and you, it's a round-based sort of thing, similar to Valorant, where you'll buy in um, 
to what to whatever equipment or abilities that you want at the beginning of a round, and then you you play a basically a deathmatch round, um, and then after that you you don't keep anything that you bought in that for in, in the previous round going into other rounds similar to Valorant and CS:GO, um, or similar to Valorant rather. I'm not terribly familiar with CS:GO personally, so I can't speak to that. But um, but yeah, it's just a fun. It, it looks like a fun addition that really fits well. Um, I haven't had a chance to try it out yet, but I'm very curious to try it out. Um, also, they announced that a mobile version of the game is coming. Mobile. So yes, they are making Apex Legends mobile. Um, similar to almost every other battle royale that's on the market right now. <laughs> so they're putting it. They're putting it on phones. Uh, so get get your phones ready for some phone some phone action, phone shooties coming to your coming to your face. Um, but other than that, I've just been having a lot of fun with it. Like going back into ranked, actually feeling like I'm getting better. I've been watching a lot of the Apex Legends esports over the past um few months. So like it's just I don't know I just I'm happy to be kind of like diving back into an ecosystem that I really really enjoy with one of these games these like live games that is actually fun for me as opposed to any of the rest of them <laughs> you know like there's some that are fun for a while but I very like I tra- I trail off after a month or two like PUBG was like that for me Fortnite was like that for me so Destiny it doesn't too, feel really like good. a treadmill to keep up with all of the changes in the game. Not necessarily. The changes are implemented pretty pretty easily, and you know buffs and debuffs like that. You know it it's very quickly to quick to get your, a grasp of what's going on, um, and it's really good for new players because like the, the the changes that have been made like are really good compared to like when the game first came out. So like it's very easy to understand. But I don't know. I I enjoy it. I've been having fun with it. I'm going to keep having fun with it. And uh, I'm looking forward to Season 9 whenever it drops. Oh, yeah. And and we'll see. I also have been uh, looking a little bit at this small indie game that I'm not completely ready to talk about just yet. Uh, It's called Forgotten Fields. I'll talk more about that next week. But um, it's a fun little indie game about a writer with writer's block. So, uh, too real. Um... (laughs) (laughs) None of us have ever been there for our projects ever. Not at all. But no, but um I'll I'll talk more about that next week when I have a bit more to say about it. But yeah, there's a, I've been looking at a few things, but Apex has been the main one. All right. And uh lastly, hey Mero, I understand you uh and uh, your boy both got a new toy. So Peter picked up a switch a couple of months ago. And uh, I got surprised with one last week as a early anniversary present, a very early anniversary present. Um, so Anna has a switch, Animal Crossing, despite the fact I was very hesitant to touch Animal Crossing at first because I'm like, this is going to be boring. It has very quickly eaten my life. Um. I've also been tooling around with Pokemon Shields. And because Brian hyped it up so much, I have Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Ah. I have beaten the first level. <laughs> or rather, I got halfway through the first level and then handed it to Peter after I died and went, Sweetie, could you help? <laughs> <laughs> because... I went in there thinking this is going to be just like it was on the Wii U. And therefore strategized in that manner and realized very quickly this is nothing like the Wii U. Mm. Um, and so got face rolled very quickly. <laughs> like on the first mini boss. Um, but that is definitely going to get some more time put into it. Uh, and I've also been tooling around with a freebie racing game called Asphalt 9. Hmm. Um, apparently this is on mobile as well. It is free to play, but there is a point at which you will get paywalled, apparently, because Peter has hit that point and has cursed it mightily. Um, but it's fun for the cop- like you know couple few hours that you get out of it beforehand like it is super smooth 
the graphics are stellar. And the races are actually really generally pretty quick. They're usually done in less than two minutes, mm -hmm. most often in under a minute. Um, but you get to tool around with some really fun cars, and I am I've I'm enjoying it. Uh, I've I've missed good racing games. <laughs> I've seen a few uh, people uh, talking about this as well around, and if it didn't have the paywall, uh, I would definitely be into this. Like, this is, uh, it reminds me so much of uh, the old Burnout games. Mm hmm. Uh, especially with its focus on uh, drift and your burn meter, etc. Um, I would otherwise yeah. have been all the fuck over this. Yeah, like, it's worth it, because, like, there is a good chunk of content to go through before you get paywalled. Mm -hmm. So it's worth it just because, A, it's free. Mm -hmm. B, it's not that big of a game, so it's not going to munch too much space. Um, but it is, like, that was legit actual gameplay that we just saw. I, I just don't want to... Uh in degree the edging into my video game uh bonanza and i really want to get to the good stuff and you never get to the good stuff in a racing game until like midway through when you're actually getting really challenged and have to redo races and learn new things so i i, I have trouble putting my time into this just because of those uh hurdles for myself but yeah your mileage like, may they vary. start they start you off with a lancer Ooh. which is fine um and then they move you into a bmw of some sort that i tried to protest driving because i really don't like bmws um and then you move into like there are various types of cars as well so like um do you get is it a charger or a challenger one of the two. Very, 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 very early on, there's also a Nissan Nismo up for grabs, which is a stupidly fun little car to drive. Like, part of me wants to be offended that my car is a starter car in this game, uh, but considering <laughs> it's up against a Lancer, uh, especially if you're talking like a Lancer Evo, then, uh, okay, fine, I'll give it to you. And, I mean, like, you're also getting... In this game, like, if you get the rare card packs, because, you know, there's got to be a gotcha mechanic. Oh, yeah. Um, There are chances at building up to getting stuff like, you know, the Lamborghini Huracan, and uh, there are a few Bugattis. I think there's a Chiron in there. Um, <laughs> Like, some really, really disgustingly beautiful vehicles. <laughs> But something tells me from the rage that Peter has exhibited over this that it is a uh, post paywall. <laughs> Bugatti, heck yeah! Can you All tell? I remember Bugatti, and I immediately thought about a skit from Loiter Squad. Can you tell we haven't talked in a while because of how long the intro segment has gone? <laughs> what? on and this is important and relevant to our interests absolutely we've got to tell the people <laughs> about the video games that we love and uh devote a good chunk of our lives to right exactly and one more thing before we move off because i can tell you're angling for a pivot here trap mm -hmm. but one more thing you say you want a racing game that's going to challenge you quicker right okay like almost out, out, out the gate have you tried track mania <laughs> I have also heard about good things about Trackmania. Uh, that's another one I've seen people futzing around with. I only say that half jokingly because Trackmania made me jump off of it very quickly. <laughs> oh? Is it Trackmania like the <laughs> racing, like the car racing version of Quop? No, not necessarily. It's just like, it's just very. Like the racing, like the driving feels good. It's just the game is just. There's so much of it and so much customizable stuff and servers that you can jump into with it that, like, you can very easily get into some very funky tracks um, <laughs> that will frustrate the fuck out of you. 
<laughs> yeah, Very from cool. my understanding, it's sort of like the Mario Maker of racing, which, um, great streamer bait. Oh, totally. Also, if you really like, like, German dance music, like German house music, <laughs> you are in for a treat. Oh, So I'm in. much EDM going on. In I'm in. Just based on that, I'm in. <laughs> You know, is it me or does it, uh, wow, my brain completely broke. Let's never mind on that tangent I was about to go for because I completely can't remember the name of the game that I wanted to reference anyway. <laughs> it really looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the story. Hey, Alex, how you been? Uh, so the first thing to talk about is, uh, Balan Wonderland, a, uh, a game with much hype and promise, uh, coming to us from Square Enix. Uh, some of the original, uh, Sonic Team members are on this game, uh, promise to give us 80 different outfits that you can wear and change into. And each outfit changes completely the way that you play the game. Um, and uh, it has fully released, and very much the people are whelmed at the product that came out. Uh, it has done horrible <laughs> as far as sales have gone. Uh, it feels like Square Enix has completely scrapped trying to advertise this thing and just let it fucking exist. Uh, which means Square will probably never put out another game like it. It is a retro-style uh, 3D platformer um, driven by a uh, lead character, Balan, um, a showman. And uh, a lot of the uh, cutscenes are amazing. There's some decent work, honestly, put into Balan Wonderland, but it is so whelming that it's just flooded under literally anything else and has a lot of boring parts as the game was kind of made for kids but not really it is certainly a game that exists and from every review i've seen it's not like you're gonna want your time back playing the game or something but it's not really something to go out of your way for unless you are just that sort of fucking hype uh i want to play a 3d platformer guy uh, this might be Yuji Naka's greatest sin. <laughs> um, and that look, I, I'm not gonna like the game looks great. Yeah, like the graphics look really, really good. Um, and I get the idea. You know, this is like we're talking about Yuji Naka, like you know, Knights, mm -hmm. Sonic, pla like platformers are his thing, and. Yeah. I see where some of the ideas in this game could have worked well if the execution was better. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, my God, did it miss the mark. And it missed the mark very quickly. Like, as soon <laughs> as the demo for this game came out, like, people were like, um... Mm -hmm. Like, it immediately threw people into a state of, of worry about what this game was going to resemble whenever the full release came. And clearly it was more of that, which is unfortunate because like Yuji Naka has proven that he can lead teams to build great things over the years. And granted, some of those things might be divisive around some some circles of the gaming sphere. Um, but at the same time, like he's made beloved franchises and like this just this didn't it didn't have the same heart in a lot of ways. And, and it just the execution was just off kilter there. <laughs> From what I can um, tell, it committed the cardinal sin of wanting to go too hard, too fast. And I mean too hard on the development, right? Like, making 80 different movesets possible is such a big thing, as well as making it available in the new and the old, and make sure that we're getting the most out of the PlayStation 5 that we're putting it on, and it just sounds like a painful development. Well, I mean... We talk about, the, yes, there are like 80 suits that give you different abilities, that sort of thing. But those abilities usually amount to just like one thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's a ton of that. I wouldn't put a, a lot of the the um, 
I don't know what the right terminology would be, but I wouldn't put a lot of like the 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 pitfalls of the game on the fact that they had to create like powers for eighty different suits in that oh, way. Like, it's yeah, less gonna... like designing the levels around it to make it interesting each time you go through it, right? Yeah, now that now yes, the level design did suffer from that because there were a lot of times where you needed one suit for one specific thing to to accomplish, and then you had you needed to jump back to a different suit, which wasn't as necessarily as readily available. So you're, there's a lot of backtracking in levels, and that creates a loop that many people, especially in a game like this, don't necessarily want to engage in. Yeah, this um, I actually watched Highlander play. A good chunk of it, like of the demo, uh, he had done a stream where he was going through Twitch's indie demo showcase. Mm-hmm. Um, and the general consensus of him and just about everybody watching was cool concept, but the execution is off. It, the controls were really at some points they were too tight and then they were really really loose the next second um and yeah the backtracking was awkward so very awkward but it pretty much boiled down to a game that was like alice in wonderland meets crash bandicoot like the n64 one on crack <laughs> and it was it was uh like it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> the story's kind of cool. But yeah, it just it it could have been so much more. Yeah, I think with the narrower scope, you could have really done something cool like, you know, uh hadn't time had the uh, fortitude to uh especially with the uh, stuff they've done since the initial output, but um, has done pretty well with, you know, limiting the amount of things to do in a particular area so that it doesn't feel too overwhelming with the backtracking and making, uh, you know, the different types of outfits actually matter more than one-use type things. Uh, it's it, just it, it it's weird but not a good weird like it's a shame too because uh square enix has been pretty straightforward like if this game doesn't do well we're not going to do another platformer since platforming isn't our thing so uh I look forward to seeing what else he is able to work with that is more in the square sphere of uh, game production. It's not like the Balan team is being, you know, dissolved at any time because they are still incredible developers. Like, you can see parts shine from everything I've seen here. Um, now what shines far less, <laughs> uh, Uh-oh. Cyberpunk 2077, um, the information is in at how well it's done, and, uh, it has been a huge sales success, uh, despite the fact that, uh, you know, they have refunded around $10 million worth of games, is my understanding. Um, even after those refunds, the game has marketed uh, over $200 million at this point uh, worth of income. Um, so th- while there are talks about uh, potentially pushing the game aside over uh, at CD Projekt, um, I kind of have my doubts considering that there is still a fan base, even if the game is jank as shit. Um, I mean, there's an undercoating of some good shit here if they can uh, fix it. <laughs> I... I mean, the fact that they've set aside 37 million pounds as provisions for returns 
indicates yes we they know they set up a shit game <laughs> but like i just uh it needs to stop it needs to go away this game broke my heart man <laughs> yeah like i still am going to be an apologist like i think there's a great game under the hood um, I enjoyed my time with it, but it is um, absolutely disgusting The uh, how it came out. It's certainly gotten better, uh, not that there are not bugs in the game still, um, because there are fucking plenty, um, but I would cast it as playable at this point, not really go out of your way to play, but... I still had fun, and I'd play it again, um, especially if they put out... Um, some of the uh, new uh, side stories that they were talking about eventually doing. I, <clears throat> oh, my... Leaves is my voice is just all over the place today. Um, I don't want to necessarily speculate on the side story stuff right now, because like, I think that that is nowhere near where, obviously that's nowhere near where they should be focusing at the moment. And I don't think it's where they are focusing at the moment, considering, you know, a lot of their roadmap that they released um, earlier this year um, really pointed to getting the game to a stable place um, before the end of the year, possibly hinting about DLC, so much so to the point that they effectively shelved the multiplayer that they were planning on releasing for the game, which I think is a good call. Um, but at the same time, like, I think this just speaks to exactly what that the adage of um, um, speak with your wallet says about these sort of things because like they didn't really take a financial hit in the direct way from all the refunds that they that they um, filled. You know, like we're talking about a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of. Um, revenue that they pulled from this game um their share price got hurt mm -hmm. for good reason yeah um you know and like you talked about like you know that it was um the the way the game was the the release of the game was kind of like just wretched but i would argue that the development cycle for the game was also wretched in many <laughs> ways and 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 so there were a lot of things around this game that that had that adjective tied to it for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I'm I hope this is a learning experience for them and that they don't try and, and do this sort of thing again with another title down the line. I I could see this dissuading them from playing around in the cyberpunk universe more, you know, but mm -hmm. at the same time, like you're still talking about like tens of millions of dollars that they pulled in from this game. Um, and if that's the case, like they could definitely take another stab at it. Um, I hope if they do that, that they do so with lessons learned, not just from the release of this game, but the criticisms around this game too. Um, and, and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know, it's going to take a lot for me personally to have my faith in CD Projekt Red um, uh, re uh, restored. Per like, that's just where that's just where I am with this. Like, let's be real. They put out Witcher 4, and Witcher 4 is, like, great or something, and everyone will completely forget about, you know, CD Projekt Red putting out a real clunker with uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So See, that's the problem, though. Mm hmm like they no one should ever forget about the about the way this game was developed and released. I agree they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know you do. And I know like a lot of discerning people that am engaged with video games out there, people that listen to the show will too. But but let's be real, the general populace is not. Like like you were saying, I think the point you were getting to, I don't mean to speak out of turn or speak for you there. But, like, we have to ask more people, honestly. Even if we know they're not going to, we need to ask more of people to understand, like, the machinations outside of just the fact that my game doesn't work. 
and to really look at like systemic issues and and points of critique uh, around the othering of marginalized identities that are within these games that really speak to things that go beyond just uh, my textures popped in thirty seconds too late. <laughs> so post break, all right. <sighs> It's a. Uh, it is at least uh, fun that regardless, whenever we uh, come back from a break, or anything, there's probably something else to talk about in the form of Cyberpunk 2077. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, it's the uh, dead horse I am happy to beat over and over again. I still haven't booted that game up since January. And <laughs> I. I don't know if I'm going to boot it up again. Like I probably should just to like see where it's at now with the new patches and everything. And also because like I'm a completionist tool um, and I and I do kind of want to see the game through to the end, but at the end, also at the same time, like I've been pretty happy <laughs> <laughs> not playing cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. I don't blame you at all. Um, you know, uh, I, I love that uh, Peter brings up Fallout 76. Uh, my housemate still is playing that game, and um, I, I, it is not to knock, uh, you know, some people love bad things, and that's fine. They should be allowed to, but I just do not understand how, because they have never made up for it, even with all the patches. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's put it this way. Here's where I'm at in terms of excitement level for hopping back into Cyberpunk 2077. I feel more excited about potentially purchasing and jumping into playing near 1.22 whatever numbers ellipses <laughs> at the end of it than jumping back into Cyberpunk 2077 at this point. I have genuine excitement about the near 1.22 remake. Like I I I want to play that, but also at the same time like like I don't know that I think that that just speaks to where I'm at personally. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> just <laughs> Cyberpunk, you you gave me enough, I think. I mean, they could refund your money, they just can't refund your time. I don't think the game is even it's still not purchasable on the PlayStation Store. No, it's not purchasable on the PlayStation Store, but you can still buy a physical release on the PlayStation, and that's what the majority of people are going to do. Uh, it is available in so many places. Um... <sighs> like Google Stadia. Like Google Stadia. <laughs> which I still pay for for some reason. <laughs> <sighs> Hey, while we're in the land of mistakes, um... <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. I don't... I don't understand how this even works, to be honest. Uh, there's a new, uh... Um... Well, they call it in this a, a meta. Um... But uh, a, a new trend on Twitch is now uh, hot tub streams. Um, where you hang out in a hot tub... And uh, you just casually talk with the fans, and I don't, I don't, I don't get how this is good for anybody. How so? I'm just curious. Okay, well, if we want to have or female streamers not get bombarded by absolute assholes because that is a huge problem on Twitch. It just seems like fodder for the fuel. And I'm not saying there is not a place for this kind of content. I just don't know if Twitch is necessarily it since Twitch is Twitch is prime directive, right? Is in the creative stuff, right? It's primarily gaming, but also, you know, uh, painting, even body paint has a really great place on Twitch. 
Except women constantly get banned for body painting. That part bothers me. It really so, should allow body painting. Like this? I I cringe and I facepalm. But in the back of my mind, I'm going, hey. Twitch said, hey, no revealing clothing unless it was a bathing suit. And if it's a bathing suit, it has to be in an appropriate environment, such as a pool, hot tub, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been female streamers who have been banned, warned, etc. For wearing a low-cut shirt. Yeah. I'm sorry, some women have assets that cannot be contained. <laughs> what looks like a high-cut shirt on some people on me looks like a low-cut shirt. Uh, just to break for a second, I love that this like looks like somebody is just in their room and they've... that That's kind of hilarious to me. Please continue. Yeah. Um... So you have these women who went, fine. The clothing I was wearing was apparently not appropriate for stream. So now I'm going to be comfy. And I'm still going to continue my just chatting streams. But I'm going to do it in a hot tub because Twitch said I had to. <laughs> and like, let's, let's be real here. Um, you're not going to exactly break the numbers in Twitch by doing a hot tub stream in the first place, right? Like, if you look uh, at the, the popular streamers, you're, you know, still looking primarily at guys with the huge numbers. Um, it is, you can make a living off of doing this, yes, but if you, it's not, it's not pulling away from Twitch viewers itself in the long run, but Rather, a, somebody that is not really looking for what Twitch's real formula is. I mean, there are some streamers that use Twitch as a advertising platform for their OnlyFans. Yeah, and that's fine too. But, yeah, like... Like a I lot of know. the Twitch streamers I see doing cosplay stuff and then using that to uh, boost their OnlyFans where they do looter stuff with that cosplay, I'm not really horribly against. Yeah, I mean, like, cosplay streams have their positives but cosplay streams also have their negatives like if you're doing a hey this is how i built this cosplay cool mm -hmm. rock it if it's a hey i'm gonna sit here and giggle and pretend i'm gaming because i'm not actually gaming and and just giggle and have you throw money at me then I, I don't want to get salty over this. <laughs> and I, I don't I don't hate the idea of somebody just sitting in a hot tub and chatting. Uh, I think there's definitely a place for it. I just I don't know if utilizing Twitch as a platform for it makes sense, but also like there is the fact that it is the largest streaming platform in the entire world, right? So where else are you going to get the number of eyes upon you than Twitch? I, uh, I have absolutely no problem with this, and not for the reasons why I think most people would say they don't have a problem with this. Mm -hmm. Um mainly because like these are excuse me real quick damn my voice is just all over the place these are women that are choosing to 
sexualize themselves. They are owning their own sexuality in this way and using it for monetary gain. And I think that is perfectly fine, personally. I'm not saying that either of y'all were saying that that's not fine at all. Um, this is just my thoughts on the matter. Um, the real issue for me is how the rest of of or a, a very vocal part of the Twitch community reacts to these sort of things. Um, you know, we saw it with the the coining of the term titty streamer. Um, and now, you know, we have this coming up and so many people are complaining that that is pulling viewers away from their quality content that they do <laughs> as well. When in actuality, it's just another part of Twitch's ecosystem because Twitch has evolved into something that goes beyond just video games. Like, yes, the majority of people on Twitch are streaming video game content, but like there are ASMRists on on Twitch now. There, I I watched pro wrestling this weekend on Twitch, and that's been on Twitch for years at this point. Um, there are people that just hang out and chat, like not in hot tubs or in hot tubs. Like, there's so many different um, avenues to engage with on Twitch now that, like, to say that this one particular thing is pulling people away from what you're doing is a terrible excuse and kind of telling on yourself for the content that you're putting out, in a way. Oh, absolutely. Um, um, yeah. No, that's fine. And it just speaks agree. more. To, yeah. And it speaks more to the misogynist attitude um, that a lot of Twitch carries. I mean, we talked about this. You know, late last year with those in, like internal reports from within Twitch about them talking about, um, you know, women's bodies and, and people like female streamers bodies um, in, within the company, you know, so like this, this sort of thing is like deeply rooted in the in Twitch's own meta to to use the phrase there. Mm. Um, and in actuality, like it's something that encourages the people that are being vocal about this on Twitch to continue to be vocal about it. And the fact that I, I love this Kotaku article just for the sheer fact that it has so many of people that are engaging in this, this um, new trend with hot tub chats and sort of thing, because they are they're they put on display exactly what, what it is for them. It's like, we are going to take this misogynistic male gaze that you put on us and we're going to profit the fuck out of it. <laughs> and there's nothing y'all can do about it because we like, we own our identities in this way. And I, and I love, it's very empowering. Um, you know, now does it, does it bring up yet again, conversations around Twitch's moderation stuff and how they moderate things and how they moderate the, the, um, the presence of female bodies on their platform it totally does because twitch has never been one to actually have a set rule you know <laughs> like we talked about cosplay streams a second ago there have been cosplayers who have like in no way shape or form been showing hardly like any skin and they've been banned received bans you know mm -hmm. it's very it's very scattershot in how twitch approaches these sort of things so to focus on twitch as being the arbiter um, for these people that are complaining about hot tub streamers, um, they are putting the, their eggs in the wrong basket in that way because Twitch is not going to touch something that is going to make them money. Um, which sucks because it's Twitch, but also at the same time, I'm fine with them not touching this because I'm all for the, the sort of empowerment that comes with this. So more power to the hot tub streamers for me personally. Like, get yours. Um, something you said about how one of the big vocal groups is, well, these, these people are drawing viewers away from my channel. Okay. Now I committed, which is probably one of the cardinal sins. I joined a Twitch networking group on Facebook. Mm. Every other post is some dude who is, you know, sitting at point two viewers average with thousands of followers i.e i bought my followers mm. complaining about women that do this <laughs> i have gone to check out their streams just so i could be educated when i come back to go either yeah you know dude like you've actually got a quality stream or what 99.9 percent .9 of them turn 
different OT, which is some dude sitting there staring at his game, ignoring the chat, ignoring the camera and grunting or rage quitting. Like that's it. And it's like, nobody is pulling content viewers away from you, except for you <laughs> do better. Yeah. I, I, I have never understood this argument that uh, this is pulling eyes away as if we're talking a zero sum uh, game here. There are, so many websites out there, and then what are you going to say next? Oh, I'm losing viewers because there's so many people at, uh, you know, OnlyFans or Pornhub or something. Like, come on, get a fucking clue. They're completely different viewer points. You know, I, I'm if I'm going to look for somebody for gameplay, you know, I'm going to look for somebody for gameplay. Uh, you know, if I do watch Twitch 99% of the time, it's because a friend of mine streaming, but I have also watched some Twitch streamers that are just really interesting and funny people, and that's a lot of fun. So to just say, well, you know, I don't got titties, so nobody's going to be interested in me, eh, fuck off. Like, I'm not going to say that being attractive does not help you out with being a Twitch streamer, but it's not required. Uh, no. It just makes a barrier of entry a little bit lower. But look at the guys that are, you know, leading the Twitch numbers here. Uh, these are, <laughs> some of them are real fucking chuds, but it doesn't matter. Their content is good enough. Yeah. Yo, I'm gay as fuck and I would not touch Ninja. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but like... My camera, when I stream, doesn't really drop below my shoulders. Mm. You know, a lot of the female streamers I know are in the same boat. They either don't have a camera or their camera, like they wear incredibly conservative clothing. Or their camera just isn't pointed in that direction. And one of them, like she's a partner, like she does this full time for a living. So, I don't know. All right. Hey, uh, while we're on the question of do these things help people, Gearbox um, is uh, a studio based out of Texas. And Texas recently uh, has been trying to usher in a bill uh, that would keep um, basically whatever gender you are assigned when you are born. That is the type of of uh that is the category of play that you're allowed in so if you are born a woman congratulations you can only play in female leagues um this has got the ire of multiple companies uh gearbox included that are talking about pulling uh any new work outside of texas because of these restrictive uh things so that they can keep themselves in the eye of uh people that may want to work for Gearbox, but don't want to live in a state with backwards ideas. That being said, when you pull jobs away from a community that is being hurt, doesn't it just kind of hurt the community itself by pulling away those potential jobs if they, you know, if you do happen to have uh, a trans person living in Texas that would love to work for Gearbox? Yes, I've I've been covering a number of the uh, the uh, increasingly uh, amount of uh, anti-trans bills that have been introduced across the country here in the states um, over at Toll Road, and you know Texas is one of the the you know more prominent offenders in this route. Um, they're currently trying to push through HB forty forty two, which is a bill that would prevent specifically trans girls and women from competing as their um as their identified gender um in sports um it's the same bill that we've seen in like over 30 states and um all the like they're all like just bla blatantly discriminatory against trans against trans girls trans women um and yeah, I, Gearbox, like, I am happy that they, you know, went in front of the Texas State House and they testified about, you know, wanting to, like, 
be in support of, of keeping these bills um, from being signed into law. I am, I have to say personally, I'm a bit disappointed in how they framed their argument for it. <laughs> in that they basically only focused on the fact that um, it would hurt their business because they wouldn't be able to recruit the best talent potentially. Um, and not because of how uh, trans exclusionary the laws are <laughs> that they're trying to push through. Uh, that's a that's maybe a bigger thing uh, than whatever whoever's going to come work on the PS4 version of Godfall. Um, but at the same time, though, kudos to Gearbox and, not, and a number of other companies that have been uh, out there, you know, basically throwing their corporate weight behind getting these measures um, voted down. Uh, we'll, we still have to wait and see what will happen. Um, and it, it should be noted that Gearbox did open a studio in uh, Quebec in 2015, mm -hmm. I want to say. So they have open studios beyond uh, their uh, headquarters in Frisco already. Yeah. So they, they have the ability to do that. They have the, And they have done it in the past. So we'll see if they put their money where their mouth is if these things are passed. That and that is all to be said that Randy Pitchford is still a complete fucking tool. Yes, everyone in the chat. I there are still many many problems with Gearbox, but for now they at least did something on the thumbs up, on on on, on here. Beyond Pitchford, did they have uh, sexual harassment issues at Gearbox? I don't remember them. I'd have to go back and look honestly. Fair enough. A lot of ranting about Gearbox. <laughs> I mean, for good reason. This yeah. is the first time we've actually given them kudos. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. The only time that they've really been deserving of kudos is now and then a few years back whenever they argued the same sort of argument against Texas's proposed bathroom bill, which, you know, would have targeted trans people as well. So for the same reasons also, because of, it would hurt their business. Yeah, so, like, that, that let's face pisses it. pisses me off. <laughs> A company is only going to do what a company does because it affects their bottom line. If uh, exactly. if this didn't affect them in a business sense uh, and only in a business ethics sense, it wouldn't have bothered them in the first place. And that's the same for most of these things is, hey, we want to make sure that we're always getting the best of the best of the best. Um, so let's not uh, shoo them away by having to live somewhere that uh, frightens them. Yeah, it's why the UFC is willing to sell pride shirts but not say anything about the bill that was going through Florida whenever they ran their shit in Jacksonville this weekend. And also, they're running in Houston next month. So guess what? You're not going to another state that's not having one of these bills being debated. Sorry, that's an, I'm just I'm going to stop with the <laughs> UFC. I wrote about that. Go read our announce board. I mean, could to Gearbox for this. But at the same time, it feels only a little contrived. Because, like, the last news that we had out of Gearbox was not good news. No. Right? And it's a, well, shit. Profit margins. Bad. Mm -hmm. How can we fix this? Well, there's some people that are being incredibly oppressed and threatening to have their status as people taken away. Our profit margins are calling. <laughs> you know, like that's that's all it feels like coming from someone like Gearbox. But I will say, I will say this much though, like whenever you say that sort of stuff in front of uh like the state house, like that's the language that speaks to them too. You know, like it's like there's they're especially in a capitalist uh, society, like Corporate speech really amounts to, like, where's our money going to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I mean, I see a lot of that up here right now with the response to the way the world is. Let's vote 16 times against paid sick days for our workers. And then when our, our polls start failing, appear on a press conference crying in remorse because we weren't listening well enough and we didn't do good enough. Hey, uh, yeah. let's uh, take a step <laughs> back from all of the heavy uh, conversations we've just had. Uh, hey, Nintendo had an indie world while we were gone. 
Um, and there's a couple of things to talk about. Uh, uh, Fez is available on Nintendo Switch because, yo, we need a reason to buy Fez yet again. <laughs> It's available on basically everything, including your toaster. Um, a Why not? Yeah, a couple of other games also came out in the uh, short term. Um, the Longing um, it doesn't really seem to do a whole lot for me, honestly. Um, point and click adventure. Okay. Um, there is no think... game. Sorry. Yeah, I was actually just going to mention that one. I think I really want to tool around with this one. <laughs> yeah, there is uh, no game sounds actually pretty uh good to me. Um if I had the time, I'd definitely drop in more, but um this looks like a great indie to pick up if you have the time. A comedy adventure game that completely swears that there is no game. Yes. I will buy this. Um, I s still don't have much of an impression on Ariel Knight. Uh, Chris Tales uh actually looks uh pretty cute. I I love the uh the style. Um, if uh you know JRPGs from small teams is your bag, uh this you could go worse. <laughs> Uh, obviously, it hasn't come out yet, so we don't know the full details of uh, how the reception will be, but it's worth keeping your eye on. I'm scrolling through this list and getting really, really excited for one thing in particular. <laughs> and scroll up a little bit there. Uh, Road 96 also seems kind of like a neat idea. Uh, looking forward to hearing more when it comes out. But uh, hey, this is the big one that everyone got everyone yes. talking. Yes. You know what? You get to you get to have some volume for this. I I've got my happy squeeze for this. <laughs> I'm so happy that they have brought this back in this style. <laughs> it's just so good. It is so cool. Especially after that terrible Turtles in Time remake that came out on the 360. Uh... I seem to have got this continue going. Anyway, um... <laughs> So, when this comes out, Peter and I will be able to give a review because I think it's been unanimous, unanimously decided in chat that we are getting this. You can tell the love that went into this because every single turtle has their own run cycle. It, it's such a tiny detail, but if you put the attention into that, um, this definitely looks like the old uh, NES, SNES uh, turtle beat-em-up games. And... Uh, it just looks fucking gorgeous. You can tell that the people behind this really love their turtles. So, yeah, this I is think not we hard broke to beat Peter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm excited for this one too. Like it's I have a lot of fond memories of playing Turtles in Time over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> I still have a copy of the that Turtles Two the arcade game yes, <laughs> somewhere. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah this is puzzled. on Switch. This is this is part of the Switch's indie showcase. Um, as well, Aztec Forgotten Gods actually looks pretty cool. This one is super interesting to me, just because you we don't have a ton of video games come out that I look back on Aztec mythology. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I'm very curious to see what what comes from this one. Yeah, like, it, it sounds like it could be really neat, especially that it does definitely sound like it comes from a place of love. Um, so I'm for it. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about Skull the Hero Player. Uh, I mean, it's a cool concept. Yeah. 90 playable characters that you can change you by swapping your head. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Ali Ali World does also look uh, pretty neat. Um, I seem to remember it having a bit of the uh, the Jet Set Radio style aesthetic to it. Yeah, it's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, so this will definitely, uh, you know, it's still a good while off. Um, but just the the aesthetic of it is uh, very pleasing to me. So uh, this will probably hit my radar later in the year. Uh, another puzzler in hindsight, uh, remaking the House of the Dead for the Switch. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it, I, so it's hard not the, to sell me on the House of the Dead. So the last House of the Dead that I have played was House of the Over House of the Dead Overkill on the mm. Wii. Oh, so like the one good console release of House of the Dead ever made. Yes. And that re that just completely rebuilt all of my faith. <laughs> and and I need it to come back. <laughs> I mean, typing of the dead was sick as fuck, so. Yeah, this is true. Uh, Oxenfree 2. Um, yeah, if you loved Oxenfree 1, and why wouldn't you? I'm so hyped for this. Like I, I, I love the first Oxen Free, and I, and I just, uh, I'm all for this. I might kill any indie crit I have. I don't know of this series. Uh, it's a little spooky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I would probably cry. Gotcha. I don't know. It's not necessarily all that. It has a lot of heart to it. Also, like it's very much like about coming of age and and experiences um like looking back on on life and that sort of thing in that way i would say watch a let's play yeah uh, for yeah. at least the first like hour or so and see how you feel but it's okay. it's a really fun game and it's available on any platform you can fucking think of at this point yeah okay Cause scary like... is the wrong word for it um it is definitely it's definitely got a spooky atmosphere but you're not going to get like jump scares and shit out of it no, 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 no. Okay, bear bear in mind that I am quite literally queen chicken shit, and mm -hmm. this was fully and completely confirmed over the fact that Peter got me to play Gone Home and had to sit beside me continually reassuring me that this was not a horror game and nothing was going to jump out and go boo. That game is, is very eerie, though. I don't blame you. Yeah. Like, like that, that game has some some spooky elements to it if you're not if you don't know what you're like really getting into with it. so i don't blame you at all on that i fear quit playing un what was it stories untold untold stories one of the oh. two it was the one put out by devolver not the one not the not the lovecraft one and uh hate while we're still in nintendo stuff uh, while Mario 35 was finally, uh, dropped, uh, they have now announced, uh, and released for anybody with, uh, Switch Online Access, Pac-Man 99. Um, yep. this might be the best of the, uh, the, like, old school games turned into battle royales, um, because there is a lot really changed for this. Um, there's a lot of interesting power-ups uh, and uh, chain combos and that sort of shit um, that really do really does make this an interesting challenge to uh, play and try. Um, I am awful, so uh, I will never hit the 99 ever, but it's it is fast-paced, action-packed, and uh, a really great way to play Pac-Man. <laughs> I've been debating playing... giving this one a shot. Uh, same. I tried playing the Tetris 99, made it one round, and cried. <laughs> because I'm not good at Tetris to begin with, and it just further reinforced how bad I am at Tetris. <laughs> Maybe this will be your uh your jam then, and uh, hey, you can even play it for free. As long as you have that Nintendo Online subscription, hurrah! Yeah. Such is I me. mean, so even in Canada though, it's twenty four bucks a year. 
Yeah, it's it's not it's <laughs> really nothing comparatively. Um, while we're on what the uh, big guys are doing, you may remember us talking about uh, the PlayStation Three and Vita stores being taken offline. Congratulations, enough people have complained, and they're going to keep it. I mean, definitely great from a game preservation, and especially as there were still some companies looking to still make PS Vita games. It's rare, but uh, existing. Uh, so it's kind of uh, cool that this will continue to exist, and uh, they're probably going to make updates so that you can use these stores um because one of the biggest issues was was uh the uh html setup for how they were encoding this so i'm guessing they're planning to make changes over the next year but still cool as hell no you good you're happy to see it you yeah. know yeah it sucks that the psp stuff is going to be going away but you know we can get two out of three is not bad yeah <laughs> so and while talking about game stores, uh, and of course, thank you, Brennan Sinclair from GameIndustry.biz, um, Itch.io is actually now featured on the Epic Game Store along with several other applications are now on the store. But the inclusion of Itch.io is real interesting, right? Because a lot of people may not even be remotely familiar uh, with Itch.io and the literal thousands if not millions of free games uh or demos or other things that you can try out through itch.io so um it is really cool to see them on the epic game store yeah like i'm i'm stoked that this is happening because like itch.io is like one of my favorite platforms to like look through um for new interesting games to check out because it's it's so it's so varied in in approaches and creators and that sort of thing like um and really it really kind of creates an environment that allows creators to tell a lot more interesting stories and still have those games reach eyeballs unlike steam mm -hmm. you know and for that for them to be featured now on the Epic Game Store in this way, like that just puts more eyeballs on what a lot of these really interesting creators are doing. So yeah, I I am uh, all for this, you know, especially considering that Epic's not going to be taking a cut from from sales through the itch.io app mm -hmm. off of this also. So just amazing. Like Epic got off to a really rocky start. And a lot of people really developed a strong hatred of them. But if they keep doing stuff like this, I mean, they might very well overtake a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, the big game store things, storefronts. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. My brain went splurt. <laughs> it no. did not work well. Don't mind my cat freaking out, by the way. <laughs> you're fine. Kitty, 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 kitty. Ah, got you. <laughs> <laughs> we just hear a got you, followed by jingle jingle. <clears throat> and I know that cat is sulking so hard right now. Mm -hmm. He is. Sorry, next week we'll have the webcam up, um, and you can see me when I grab my kittens and play with them. Kitty cam. Hey, buddy. Anyway, hey, that takes us into our favorite, well, my favorite moment of uh, the show. <laughs> the seventh inning stretch. Uh, Blazeball uh, has been back for a while now, and boy, we missed out on a large chunk of it like three whole seasons while we have been gone uh hey uh your uh team the uh tacos uh just fucking ran away with that last season that was amazing no like there's been some some major some major developments including the tacos winning uh season 17's championship there 
Um, I want to say last time we talked, like we were coming off of a win for the Canada Moist Talkers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or that was maybe the week after. Either way, the Canada also brought home a championship. And some good news to round out the trio here. Um, both of your teams have have titles. My team finally made the playoffs. What's up, Miami Dale? <laughs> like we got there. We get, we were out pretty quick the first time around, but we got there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why did I think you were a taco? That's right, you're a Dale. Exactly, I'm a Dale fan. <laughs> I guess the aesthetic is similar, but not as cool as the Dale. That is for damn sure. <laughs> No, but but in all in all seriousness, like it was the in terms of the actual like baseball game, um, like it was really awesome to see these sort of developments and to continue to see, um, the embracing of uh of the developments from the community. Also, all, going back to what we talked about with Gearbox, really awesome to see the Houston um spies teaming up with oh what was the other team the the dallas stakes and kind of putting together a little bit of a um awareness campaign for the anti-trans sports bills that are currently going through the state of texas mm -hmm. so uh once again baseball cares does its thing yeah we've been seeing a lot of community outreach from the baseball team um what well, was it the pies that uh, held a uh, rally to uh, get money for uh, local uh, food banks? I believe. I believe they were one. Of, they were one of a few teams. Like there's been a number of teams that have done that sort of thing, but the pies, I think, actually were the most recent. I want to say. You think you're right there. Yeah, they've uh, put out some flops cards as well, little uh, trading cards uh, for uh, seasons one through twelve, the discipline era. And they are fucking cool as hell as well. Um, if you're remotely into Blaze Ball, worth picking up. Uh, on the game end, uh, Chorby Short or uh, Chorby Souls uh, wandered around and got eaten by sharks for two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> and then died, and then was brought back again, and then died again. <laughs> uh, the sharks. Uh, basically, what they do is. Any team that has a heavy soul, and I won't get into that and how that works, but um, they start eating uh, members of those teams and dropping their stats. And uh, so Chorby Shoal, Chorby Souls, the character with the most soul in the game, got brought back and moved around different teams and every team he was on. Just those team stats overall would drop into nothing the garages got wrecked by it jesus and it was hilarious to watch um that it's actually a little bit hard to think of the other happenings that uh took place we had the introduction of loot boxes loot boxes yes um characters can now receive individual items uh hats shoes uh, bats, etc., um, that have different uh, modifiers upon them. Uh, I love the uh, metaphorical shoes <laughs> the character got. Um, but they do different things, um, and it's a really neat concept of uh, characters randomly pick up items that can break. Hey, that Breath of the Wild uh, breakage system <laughs> proving useful for blaze ball so you get temporary modifiers to your characters oh and uh two characters uh what was it york and nagomi mcdaniels uh became legendary and we have no idea what the fuck happened to them they just disappeared entirely from play yeah they just kind of went back into the shadows but they're not technically in like the, the shadows proper you know like yeah. they're somewhere else <laughs> They've just been marked as legendary because their ego got boosted so high that they can no longer apparently exist in this plane. <laughs> we'll find out more about that hopefully next week because, uh, well, well, not we next week. Two weeks we're on, off. Yeah, we're on siesta time now, but still. Yeah. Um, it's been a hell of a time to follow Blazeball, uh, despite uh, a lot of discourse uh, coming up through the community. I won't get into that. It's been kind of annoying on that end, but otherwise, um, it has never been easier, especially they've made so many modifications to the way the website works that it is so easy to play now. I adore it. 
Yeah, and it's also really easy to kind of get caught up. They've done a lot of work, whether it be like the BBN or the game band themselves with, you know, spotlighting a lot of like, you know, YouTube creators that have been able to kind of con- condense the uh, the lore um, coming out of seasons or now what we're seeing is like these three week blocks of seasons mm. and kind of like keep, give people a way to digest everything so they feel caught up whenever they want to engage with it. So the community is really starting to really uh, compile and support this thing to bring new people in in a healthy way. Yeah, one thing that I would strongly recommend if you are very casual, uh, they're now putting out uh, videos um, to go over, uh, you know, each three seasons. They put out a little roundup video to talk about all of the bullshit going on. Uh, it's not just hilarious, but it actually gives you an idea of what actually has been going on if you don't pay close attention to it. So, um, God, just a huge recommendation um, to the the team for putting these things together now. Um, they even did uh, a video as well for seasons 1 through 11, so you can catch up on basically everything uh, just by watching these uh Really cool uh, spoofs on uh, new sports anchors. <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about baseball or? Um. Well, the only other thing I'd mention is that like I did not, I wasn't around for the elections on Sunday, and so mm-hmm. I did not actually get to spend a lot of my money on tickets beforehand, and then I, that turned out uh, to me being in the one percent, so all of my money is gone. Well, thank you for your contribution. Yes. I'm, I'm, you know, redistribute my wealth, please. Oh, no. I haven't logged in in forever. Yeah, I'm you probably don't have money. <laughs> uh, let's find out. <laughs> I was doing so well with money in this, too. Um, No, no, I definitely was not in the 1%. I'm still sitting at... A hundred and fourteen thousand. Ah, you just missed the cutoff. Yeah. All right, back to the news. News. Uh, Jeff Kaplan has left Blizzard. Um, after nineteen years and uh, being one of the major people in Overwatch, it is definitely an uh, era gone. Uh, losing Kaplan. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Kaplan, sorry, I mean, talk over you. No, there, go right? ahead. It's it's hard to think of Blizzard without him, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, and, and, I, and I think we can definitely, between the three of us, speak to many different eras of Jeff Kaplan at, at Blizzard. Because, you know, I know he came on originally to work on WoW mm-hmm. um, there, but, you know, for me and in, in, in my engagement with Blizzard, Kaplan has been the face of Overwatch since its inception. Um you know, um, so him leaving at this point, whenever Overwatch 2 is still in development and people are clamoring for more details about when that's going to be released or just more content about it. Uh, and also, you know, the Overwatch League just started its fourth season um, and Overwatch is still regularly pulling in massive amounts of player counts um, on it, like. It's a very odd time for Kaplan to be to be leaving Blizzard, um, and it's be, and it really makes me have some wanderings about Overwatch Two. Mm. Um, I they, obviously they're leaving Overwatch Two's development in capable hands. You know, um, I believe uh, Aaron Keller is taking over the development there. He was part of the founding team on on the original Overwatch, so they're keeping it in the hands of someone who knows Overwatch through and through. But at the same time, Kaplan was so much of the public face for that game Mm -hmm. um, that you lose a lot with him not being there to represent it um, going forward. You know, there's a reason why. I remember when I went to the Grand Finals in Philadelphia of the Overwatch League a a little over a year back, there's a reason why whenever I was leaving the arena, there were like uh, there was a small crowd of people kind of gathering around where Jeff Kaplan was with his like, you know, I guess bodyguards or entourage or whoever he was with that was like getting him into his car. They were around him trying to like just like just to get a moment with him to talk to him, you know, 
like he he is Overwatch for a lot of people. Um, and with him gone, like it is definitely going to take a hit in some ways. Yeah, this has to be devastating for the community, especially right because um, with him being such a large face, um, a lot of people knew the game and knew, uh, you know, Kaplan and you know his uh, work on it was kind of forefront uh, in a lot of ways. Like I don't usually know individual developer names, but I am familiar with him enough to know that this is a major loss for the company and you know hopefully whatever he moves on to um you know something big and what he wishes to do with his life especially working for a company for nearly 20 fucking years it's hard to really have anything but uh respect for somebody you don't tend to stay in one place for that long in this in this in this industry Mm-mm. no But yeah, looking forward to wherever the man, the legend goes. Um, yeah, just sucks to see more of this, like t- this, like entrenched turnover. Yeah, within Blizzard it, uh, yeah, it doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, good vibes for how Overwatch Two is going, does it? I mean, there's been some. Let's be real; like, there's been some some feelings around the the elongated development of Overwatch 2 at this point. They haven't really shown any a, a ton of stuff around the game since they initially announced it like 2 years ago. So yeah. Like and our, the the game's still being developed. I have yeah. no doubt the game will come out. I just don't know if they're like how much they might be going back to the drawing board on some stuff because they've been very quiet about some of the new things that they were adding to that game. Um since they announced them so i i don't know it's it's this is this is a, this is a thing for jason trier mm. to get, oh absolutely get his into. <laughs> i'd love to hear what trier has to say on this whole thing but um i haven't really heard him talk much about overwatch lately maybe he's I, holding that for something he's been focused more on Sony and Bend, Sony Bend and Days Gone sequels getting canceled. Did y'all see the Sony Bend developer basically come out and like shit on people who buy games on sale? Fuck off. Seriously? Yeah, he can fuck right off. Yeah, do you think those people are going to buy games if they weren't on sale? (laughs) I'm going to find an article and link it in the chat for everybody because I know we have other topics to get to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is a thing that maybe maybe next week we do a little bit more on because this was a thing that just... I would wow. love to leave that in the uh the Mr. Video Games chat. We're, we'll go over this in detail next week cuz that is amazing. Um hey, uh everyone fucking loves Hades. Uh Dice gave it game of the year. What the fuck else do you expect? Uh it definitely was the game of the year. And it is so cool to see uh my boys at Supergiant Games uh the one of my favorite developers of all time, getting the love they so fucking deserve with Hades. So, uh, good job on yet another goddamn award under your belt. Yo, Hades is just too fucking good. It's just too fucking good. <laughs> it is. Um, we also have uh, a couple of images that have leaked from the Sonic 2 filming, but everyone's favorite seems to be uh, the placeholders of Sonic and uh, Tails, and uh, I guess a spoiler for the movie, Knuckles is also there. So uh, clearly Knuckles will have some place in the upcoming movie. <laughs> the dead eyes on these like stand-ins. They have seen into the abyss, especially Tails. God, Tails, yeah. Tails has seen well, some shit. And you gotta figure, like, at least these still look better than the original Ooh. debut of Sonic. All those teeth. Too true. Too true. Were you gonna say too soon? No, uh, well, well, that's where my brain went. It was like, brain, what are you doing? Also, <laughs> Jim Carrey skyrocketing <laughs> probably not Jim Carrey probably a stunt actor still look at that move awesome love it 
um, good news that a lot of people will appreciate. I I kind of didn't think it was that terrible of a thing, but uh, Discord has ended talk deals with Microsoft um, after God. a couple of weeks of discourse. I didn't think it was terrible myself for them to be involved with Discord, but there was a lot of upset people in the community. But we were talking a ten billion dollar pay uh, payout for Discord that is uh, not happening at this point. I'm sorry, I could have seen them going so many, so many bad ways with Discord, and yeah, it 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 could have been really bad. True, I'm kind of better glad the devil we know. It's, over. it's very exactly. true. And the other thing that coming out of this is that there are um, some reports that Discord is looking at potentially filing an IPO and going Ooh. public off of this. Ooh. So that really, I think that is also, I think if that's true, that's probably the main key and why this deal with Microsoft did not happen. Mm -hmm. Because whenever they were talking to Microsoft, like the numbers that were being reported about the valuation um, for Discord, per microsoft was around 10 billion dollars and let's be real like if you look at discord's growth over the past year like it's been exponential um due to the the pandemic and everybody like kind of a lot of stuff moving online in that way um also then this was just maybe something that that i saw that i don't know this is not a th like anything from discord or anything like that but if you look at the last big video game company to go, um, or video game community, whatever thing to go public, um, Roblox, I mean, people were looking at their evaluation in like the same range mm -hmm. of discords. And then immediately after going public, that value went up to like over $46 billion. So like discord, you know, knowing that they don't, they won't have anybody like any other like corporate um heads to really answer to when doing this like stand to make a potentially a more a much more sizable chunk of money and maintain their overall uh, independent control of the company outside of you know whenever you do go public you have shareholders and that sort of thing and fuck the stock market fuck capitalism <laughs> but at the same time you know like this is probably the better route for discord if they want to maintain the platform and keep with their vision of it going forward what we're saying is if you have any spare money get an acorn account and get ready for an ipo <laughs> or wealth simple or you know anybody but robin hood god i'm yeah. very curious to see what that that initial offering would be <laughs> With that initial like per share price is I have to imagine it would go mad quickly. Um may drop off after that, but you would see some real numbers hitting. I think Roblox launched at something like seventy five ish a share Canadian or US. Mm. And then within like by end of day was well over two hundred or something. Like it yeah. was it was dumb. <laughs> And I may or may not be salty over the fact that I didn't jump on that. Oh, wait, no, right. Peter plays the stock market. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, it's still around $70. Um, Good. Yeah, so it hasn't really fizzled or anything at any point. It looks like it did do a huge dip for a little bit in the 60s but even that like that <laughs> it still boggles my mind that roblox is worth that much money kids uh, man did we i can't even remember if this was the one we were just talking about nope okay um square enix uh also denies uh attempts to buy it out there have been talks that uh companies uh including microsoft may be interested in buying square enix and uh they say no <laughs> yeah i mean microsoft just has a lot of money and they are looking to acquire mm -hmm. things right now i mean that's really the only reason why they were looking to talk to discord 
was just because like we have we have money y'all do a service really well that we could stand to gain from and we we've destroyed seen it. our last one <laughs> yes yes they did uh, <laughs> yes they did uh, rip skype um but you know, Xbox has bought a lot of studios in the past two years. Yeah. It would not surprise me at all if they were trying to make a play for Square Enix. I don't know how much Square Enix would be in play right now. As much as like the you know, the adage is like everything's in play for the right price. But I just don't know like what Square like, because Square seems really stable right now outside of the whole kerfluffle with Avengers. Um yeah, well, you know, there's Avengers and Bell and Wonderland and uh, uh, the the guy that can't talk or hear. Oh, Yokotaro. No, no, the 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 game that came out with the. Oh, the the um, oh god, what was that called? Uh, why did I say Yokotaro? Well, first off, on that, mm -hmm. of course he can hear and talk. I'm sorry. Uh god, I can't remember what it was. Now I know what you're talking about, though. The quiet something. Uh, something along those lines. Yeah. The quiet man. There we go. The quiet man. Yes. There. There you go. That. That. Whatever that was. At the same time, though, like Outriders is doing really, really well. True. So far. Um, and even though Avengers like hasn't maintained audience really initially, that game sold fairly well. Yeah. Um. So like it also let's not forget all the Final Fantasy bullshit that they got mm -hmm. out over there. Like Square Enix is pretty fine. Yeah, right now. and let's be real here. Square Enix um is beloved uh, by their home country. Uh Japan is all about them. If they were to be bought out by a Western uh company, I can't imagine the uh response would be too po uh, positive amongst their fan base especially well I don't, especially with a company that doesn't have as much popularity in the japan video game world like mm -hmm. microsoft does like xbox is not big there no at all you know so i mean in that way it could be advantageous for them because they have one of the more prolific Japanese studios to to make games that may appeal more to a Japanese audience and possibly put some of those exclusive on on Xbox. Sure. But at the same time, like I just I think Square appreciates where they're at. Mm -hmm. Um but then again, you never know. Like they yeah. could be entertaining entertaining stranger uh, things off. have happened. Exactly. Uh the last story will make this one pretty quick here. Uh, a new Kickstarter has come out that has really uh, gotten the eye of uh, retro enthusiasts. Uh, Pie Packer has gone into uh, Kickstarter now. It is a um, web-based console um, that only plays retro games, and they are fully licensed retro games. Uh, you've got Earthworm Jim, Glover, uh, and these are just ones to start out with the initial offering. Uh yeah, you got worms in here, um, commando, um, just some really cool games are a part of their initial offering, and this is before they've even gone through their first Kickstarter. There's no real hardware uh, required, though uh, you can use their adapter to uh, play your own cartridge. Uh, using this, but you definitely don't have to to play uh, some of their online games. Uh, so it, uh, you know, combines, uh, you know, the social playing online thing uh, with a lot of interesting uh, uh, games that people know and love. Uh, some new things that uh, uh, have a retro feel, but primarily actual retro games that people know and love you know sensible soccer and glover like mwah. yeah those are both interesting choices they're not the greatest games ever but they are amusing in a multiplayer environment so i can see entirely why they chose that i mean i don't know sensible soccer revolutionized like soccer video games like honestly that that's a that, that is a seminal title i'm surprised like that seeing them have that game in here it gives it credibility a lot of credibility yeah for me personally but also glover's dope 
So <laughs> Yeah, I uh I, I don't know myself if I'll be dropping into the initial Kickstarter, but I do want to see where they go. Um just really putting into uh Kickstarter uh platforms, right? Uh has not gone well overall, but maybe this one will be different and I would love for it to be different because uh the idea is so fucking cool. <laughs> so yeah. That is our last story. Um and uh a pretty cool uh it, some really cool things we talked about this week, but of course we can't finish Mr. Video Games ever uh without giving you our Mr. Video Games of the Week. Of course, Mr. Video Games is a person, place, noun that uh, has done uh, good, bad, ugly. It has just been such a thing that you can only look at it and go, holy shit, that, that right there is video games. And our winner for the week of April the 26th, 2021 is a certain Mr. Bowser who has been sued by Nintendo. Wait, like, like, spiny shell, like, breathing fire Bowser? Gary Bowser. I don't know, his first name was Gary. <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, he is one of the people in Canadian, a Canadian of all, that, uh, has been doing some of the, uh, Hacking to uh, make Nintendo consoles, let's say, do things that they were not designed to do uh, as part of Team Executor, um, which technically still exists, um, but they uh, primarily sell mod chips to uh, Nintendo consoles um, that allow you to do things you shouldn't be able to do technically. Uh, and they have gone after uh, different members of the team as they're able to suss it out and uh, get those people out of the uh, countries that they live in, because most of them are not in countries that are easily sued. But uh, they did get uh, Mr. Gary Bowser here. Um, $2,500 for each traffic device and $150,000 for each copyright violation, uh, which would be billions of dollars. He's gonna have to sell all his castles. <laughs> that, was a, that was a bad joke. I'm, it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, Doug Bowser versus Gary Bowser. It is going to be the fight of the century. <laughs> God, this whole what is what is the chance that I've you would never have never met a man named Bowser? I neither have I. Like neither, of, like it's just ridiculous. Like you would have one man named Bowser running Nintendo, mm -hmm. suing another man named Bowser. <laughs> you get more like Nintendo. A really strange place. Oh, there's probably going to be a plot twist during the court cases and shit, where like it comes out that like they're cousins or something. <laughs> I mean, it, it wouldn't be too weird, right? He's a, a Canadian national, so that's not terribly far off from uh, Mr. Bowser himself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is a shame because uh, the team uh, does do a lot of really good mods, especially uh, things that allow for streaming from devices that would otherwise not be streamable. Um, but they also uh, do do homebrew mods, etc., which uh, have leg questionable legality, to say the least. Um, though, to be honest, I think if you're looking at, like, a Game Boy, a DS, uh, a Wii... Uh, at this point in their life cycles, fuck it, get a mod. <clears throat> it's never been easier to fucking mod your classic consoles. So, like, I could see them, like, being pissed off over uh, the uh, the upcoming Switch stuff I think they were working on. But uh, for, like, 3DS work, who gives a fuck? 
Yeah, I mean, like, this is coming from a girl who has a modded Wii mm -hmm. that can play everything from NES up to Wii. <laughs> um, I mean, I've so... got a Game Boy that plays every Game Boy title, so I can't say shit. Doesn't your one Game Boy play Sega games? Yeah, it uh, plays Master System and Game Gear games. Oh, yeah. Hi, pots, meat, kettles. Um, I, I rarely play it for that. those intentions. I just am glad to have it because uh, it's so much easier to play the games I actually own. <laughs> Oh yeah. And I mean like with the the Switch online, like I have access to a full catalog of SNES games. Mm -hmm. I have access to a full catalog of NES games. Like eh. The the poor Wii never gets touched except for House of the Dead now. <laughs> yeah, um I uh recently had to pull out my Wii since oh that's phrasing. Oh, that is phrasing all over. Um, but, <laughs> um, the furniture, what was holding it had to be, uh, gotten rid of, so, uh, yeah, I had to, uh, put it into, wow, phrasing, but I can't think of another way of, I had to put it in a box for holding, so that's where it is now, but looking over it was just like, oh, oh, you poor baby, you have not been touched in a decade. And to the box it goes, and it will sit and uh, continue to not be loved. With my one GameCube controller along with it. <sighs> well, that covers Mr. Video Games for April the 26th, 2021. Uh, I have been Slacker Kite here to talk you through the world of video games. Of course, follow me on Twitter. Uh, twitter.com forward slash lacquer kite uh, links to our discord as well in the doobly doo down below we talk about video games all the goddamn time uh, as well as politics media and other things that interest us as a uh, community uh, we of course uh, live and thrive based upon community we are not just a one person team we are multiple people for all of the iterations of dead sun entertainment that have ever existed that saying, being said, Brian, you got any final words for us this evening? Yes, uh, continue to practice safe social distancing, wash your hands, wear your masks, stay fucking messy, and follow me on Twitter at WonderboyOTM. Uh, you can check out my words uh, regularly at Outsports.com and now at TollRoad.com, which is spelled T-O-W-L-E Road.com. Um, and just follow me to see where uh, my other stuff might be popping up here and there. Coop, thank you. Wear a mask and don't go to the fucking events taking place in Florida, you dumb, dumb pieces of shit. Lindsay, any final words for us this evening? As always, don't forget to love each other from a socially responsible distance. Wear a mask, wash your hands, be the change you want to see in the world, and just be cool. Let me... Yeah, I've leave. got nobody live. Wow. You know That's what? Rare. There's nobody live, but I tell you what you should do. You should go over to twitch.tv slash goprofessionalwrestling and watch Stephanie Sterling at a fucking pro wrestling event that I watched on Saturday. You go fucking check that shit out. Polyam Cold Party 3. Bye.